We're going to look at verse 11 and verse 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Now don't worry, we're going to go over a lot more passages, but these are the main two <clears throat> verses that I wanted to look at tonight. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come again thanking you for your many blessings, for the life which you give us. You give us everlasting life, and we thank you, Father. Lord, as we're here, Lord, you told us to be salt of the earth, to learn your word, to grow in your word and in our life, being, bringing glory to you. Father, tomorrow, as we know that we have a holiday where family gets together, and Father, may we just take from your word tonight a good lesson where we can tomorrow, we can be a witness to our family. Father, where they may see the joy that we have in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. And one thing that I, I was thinking about, and I saw this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. As we know, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. We know that tomorrow we're going to be with our family. And we know that there are so many things to be thankful for. And throughout the Word of God, I mean, all, some of, most of the Psalms are how thankful, how we should praise the Lord, and we should. We praise the Lord every day, and we're so thankful. And I got to reading this in 2 Corinthians uh, here in chapter 9, and there's a couple verses that just had a real good lesson in it. And I was thinking tonight, as, as we leave and we go into tomorrow, the lesson that Paul is teaching the church here at Corinth is that when you give, you provoke thankfulness in others. So not only are we to be thankful of all the things which we have, but one way to bring glory to God tomorrow at your meal is to find out a way how to provoke thankfulness to God in others. Now, how do I do that? Well, he tells us. He tells us in chapter 9. Now, chapter 8 and chapter 9, Paul talks about giving. He talks about giving as if it's a gift, as if it's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He ta he's talking to the church, and he's saying, don't neglect this gift. Uh, look back at chapter 8. And so we're going to look through chapter 8 a little bit, and we're going to look through chapter 9. Like I said, we're going to have a lot of verses. They're going to build, and we're going to see these, this point come through. Something that we can go tomorrow with and, and just search and seek. How can I call someone today to be thankful to God? And why should I do it? And how can I do it? And that's what we're going to look at. So here in, verse, in chapter 8, now remember, Paul is writing to the church of Corinth. Now the church of Corinth is in Achaia, right? It's in southern Greece. And then the churches of Thessalonians, Berea, uh, those churches are in Macedonia. They're in northern Greece. So he is writing to the church of Corinth. He's saying in, in chapter 8, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit, we need you to recognize, of the grace of God that's bestowed on the churches, plural, of Macedonia. Thessalonians, Thessalonica, Berea, uh, uh, Philippi, all those churches. How that in a, a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Let's stop there for a minute. So the thought here is, 
how much God has blessed us, how much we have to be thankful for, and in, in addition, we can and should promote thanksgiving and others. Now, Paul spends this time talking about uh, giving, and he persuades the church of Macedonia to give, to recognize, look what the churches of Macedonia did, first of all. And then we see the reasons, and there's so many, there's so many benefits to giving. In verse 7, he says, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, and this is what I was talking about earlier, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us. Now that sounds like the ministry right there. That sounds like the ministering that we all should do as God's people and as his church. But what else should we abound in? See that ye abound in this grace also. Abound in giving. Abound in giving. He says, verse 8, I speak not by a commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Now, he uses Jesus as the ultimate experience in verse 9, for ye know the grace of of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And he says, And herein I give my advice, Corinthians, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward. That's not froward. <laughs> Froward's a bad connotation. Forward, that means ready. A year ago, now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Now Paul is instructing them that give according to what you have, but first... There must be a willing mind. First, look at the testimony of the churches of Macedonia. How that giving, at first they were giving to be pleasing to God. Second, to supply the needs of the saints. And third, they gave to prove the sincerity of their love. And they gave as a testimony to all the other churches. Paul's using the love of giving of the churches of Macedonia to promote the Corinthian church to also give. But first, you have to have a willing mind. you got to be ready to do it. Want to do it. Don't be forced to do it. Want to do it. And so that's what he, he is saying. And look at verse 24. Wherefore, show ye to them, show to all the world, and before the churches, the proof of your love and of your boasting and of our boasting, I'm sorry, on your behalf. Now, chapter 8 was about giving as a proof of their love. It resulted in joy. If you look at verse 2 of chapter 8, he says that in a, even though they were in a great trial of affliction, remember this is when the churches were being persecuted, um, the abundance of their joy. This church had joy, and they were giving. So we see that the benefits to giving are joy, faith, testimony. Uh, there's just so many, and proving sincerity of your love, bringing glory to God, and being pleasing to God. Chapter 9, he gives us a different thought. And this was really the thought that I was looking at and focusing on, and we'll spend the rest of the time here. In verse 1, we're actually going to look at all 15 verses, and I want us to see just, it's a beautiful lesson here. Chapter 9, verse 1, For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is um, superfluous, I think I said that right, superfluous for me to write to you. Now that superfluous means that it is um, without saying that he's kind of taking it to the next level. There's, it's more than needed. For I know the forwardness of your mind. 
Now remember in chapter 8, verse 12, he said, first, have a willing mind. Now that comes, that comes to be very important here in a minute when he starts telling us how to give. First of all, you need to be ready and willing of your mind. In verse 2 again, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia that Achaia, remember where Achaia was, that's Corinth, that's where Corinth was, and Centria was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Now think about this. So this isn't reading like a timeline narrative. It's reading that Corinth was ready a year ago to give beyond themselves, like the churches of Macedonia were. Paul was boasting about the churches of Macedonia, about the church of Corinth, is, it's almost the same thing. Like he, had, he was in Macedonia bragging about the giving of Corinth. And now he's in uh, Corinth, now he's writing the Corinth, bragging about the giving of Macedonia. So what's that do? It encourages all the churches to give. It encourages all of us. When you see somebody giving and there's joy and there's love and it's fulfilling needs, what does that do? It encourages you. It talks to you. And so you are willing to give. And so I, I love this that here, you know, you got to remember, Paul was a smart man. And God used Paul in a great way. And we're going to see that as we get into Acts uh, chapter 9, chapter, well, chapter 10, where he saves Paul. But Paul, if you think about it, he's the apostle to the Gentiles. He's going out. These are Gentile, you know, out in Greek uh, culture. And uh, the Lord has instructed Paul, given Paul wisdom, to take care of the Lord's churches. One of the things that Paul sees as a threat to the church is the persecution, the, the discouragement the devil, you know, is fighting, is fighting these people. I mean, this is the, the, big, the big boom of the, the church that happens here. And so Paul's like, you know what? In order to encourage the saints of the Lord, I need to show them how the other saints are adding to the work. And so um, I think that he sees the forest. Paul sees the forest. How can we keep the, the, the people encouraged? And we know that Paul, you know that's the Lord's work, but I believe that the Lord had given Paul the leadership to, to see this, to do to what keeps the saints encouraged in the most depressing and discouraging times of their life, when it's the hardest it is to serve God in your life, what will keep the saints encouraged? And this is just one of them. This is just one of the ways. They need, they need food. They need basic things. And as God uh, fills our coffers, we are to be a, a conduit. We'll be a conduit of blessings. And I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. But the boasting that Paul made of them provoked the churches of Macedonia to give. The example that we just saw, that how in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy, the whole thing I just read. You're like, wow, Macedonia gave and they were joyful, but they were willing of themselves to give. How much encouragement did they get from hearing about the churches of Corinth giving? And that's what Paul is saying here in verse 2. Your zeal hath provoked very many. <laughs> Yet have I sent the brethren. Now we're getting into Paul's plan. This is Paul's plan of receiving the gift that the church of Corinth is to, to make towards the churches of Macedonia. He says, yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest happily, now that doesn't mean happily, we've seen that word before, it, you can say God forbid. Lest God forbid, or um, worst case scenario, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared. We, that we say not, ye, should be ashamed in the same confident boasting. That's one of the worst things in the world, isn't it? To have somebody uh, talking about, you know, the, 
just your faith, but not that this happens a lot, but think about this. If, just not in just the work of the Lord, but if somebody is bragging about you and they come to see whatever it is they're bragging about and you're awful. <laughs> I mean, that's what Paul's saying. Look, I'm bragging about your all's love and your giving and we're getting ready to visit you and the last thing I want to do is for you to be embarrassed or not ready. Uh, you need to be what I have built you up to be. In verse 5, so Paul had a plan for that not to happen. He says, therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, your gift, whereof ye had notice before, that the same might be ready as a matter of a gift or a bounty and not as of covetousness. Now think about that. So what Paul's plan was, was, okay, because I don't want to catch them off guard and get a bad knee-jerk reaction to us coming and wanting a gift, we're going to send brothers before, and we're going to give you notice that Paul and the brethren, brethren from Macedonia are coming to receive this gift. And this word here, covetousness, at the end of this, it's, it's very interesting. It is that they would not be giving Paul and the church of Macedonia the gift with sour puss faces. <laughs> Grudgingly. Paul is sending forerunners to prepare their minds, prepare their hearts to get ready to give. Because when we, when we come, we got to see a cheerful heart. You are a lighthouse, not just to the lost, but to those who are standing strong just like you in the faith. And we need to, when we come together, we need to see God encouraging. And um, that's what he says is, I mean, could you imagine, just for, just for a second, if... Somebody from church or, or somebody come up to you and gives you $20 and just says, here, take it. I guess you need it. Or imagine if you're, if you're making a lasagna for somebody and you show up to their door because they're sick or maybe they're going through some things and you show up with the lasagna at the door and say, well, it took me all day to make this and it cost me $50. And all the ingredients, but here you go. Here. And then you walk away. So that is what Paul wanted to avoid, was any kind of grudgingly giving saints. And that's, one, why we have to have a ready mind. And that's what he says in verse 6. That, that, that's what prompts him to go on. And say, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he hath purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. God loveth a cheerful giver. And so we see that that's Paul's plan when he sent these forerunners is when they were to come to them that they would be ready with their bounty, with their gift. We see, first of all, uh, I know that there's points here. I don't know I didn't give them to you. But first of all, how do we produce thanksgiving and how do we strengthen our faith? First, we are to abound in giving. In chapter 8, we saw that Paul had charged us to abound in this gift also. Uh, with all of your gifts that you have in the church, faith, uh, knowledge, you have love, you have diligence, be sure to abound in this gift also. So we are to abound in giving. Second, we are to have a mindset that's ready. A ready, a, a willingness to give. A, a heart that's ready to give. To not keep what we have, but to give to those who are in need. Third, we see we give as a proof of the sincerity of our love. It's a testimony. He gave Christ as the ultimate example. 
Look at the proof of Christ's sincerity of his love. He gave to the poor, though he was rich, he himself became poor, that we might be rich. So he looked onto the needs of others more than his own needs and to glorify God. And so, and now we've got to the point in verses 6 to 11, that was uh, chapter 9, 1 through 5, now 6 to 11, giving will strengthen our faith and promote our thanksgiving. It will also produce joy in us. We give with a cheerful heart. Um, have you ever heard somebody say, well, if I won the lottery or if I got an inheritance or I got $50 million, I'd give money to everybody. I would give money to this person and that person. And have you ever stopped and, and reflected on why? Why that's a very common expression, why that's a very common thing the people who get a lot of money will do? Well, it's because they know they have a supply of money that they're not going to run out of anytime soon. But yet, as God's people, we have an endless supply. When we write checks, we're writing checks from God's bank account. Uh, there, there was a, a really rich Christian, and, and, and there was somebody who came up to him, and he said, how can you give away all this money and still be this rich? And he answered, and he said, well, as God shovels it in, I shovel it out. But God's got a whole lot bigger shovel than I do. And so we see that we trust in him. It's faith. It's faith-based giving. We, we know that the Lord is going to take care of us. Uh, I like that saying that we're writing checks to others from God's bank account. We have all sufficiency. And that's what he says in verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. We will never outgive God. We will never outgive the Lord. And when we give, that is a faith that we're strengthening in ourselves. It's faith because we believe that the Lord will provide. He says, as it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. We thank him for the provision he gives to us. Tomorrow, well, I'm just, you know, when, when, when you pray, I, I, one of the things that I do, and I don't know if you do, but not just pray for the daily food, but thank you, Lord, for providing this whole time. You have provided everything. And that's all the evidence and I mean, you talk about evidence and assurance of faith. Is he's provided this long. He's going to keep providing uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, we thank him for just the way that he orchestrates in people's lives. Isn't that something? That he cares and loves us so much that he uses us to be a blessing to others. He doesn't just open up the window and pour out money or pour out this, he uses people. He uses his servants. He uses his children to minister to others. He knows I have need, and he knows who to grow and tell them to go and meet my need. <laughs> he's, he's, he's accomplishes so much all at once. He's growing people's faith by telling them to go, go ahead and use that money and give it to that brother. Spend it on that brother. Spend it on that sister. Go ahead and spend your time. You know, it's not, it, it may not just be money that you give. You give your time. You can give your attention. You can give your prayers, your love, your heart. Give your heart to somebody. Heartbreak with them. Cheer with them. Rejoice with them. Rejoice that they're happy. <laughs> You know, and so involve your heart. I know sometimes it's hard. We want to put that shield up. And um, sometimes I, I wonder if I'm the worst of them because I'm like, Lord, help me to put that shield down and just reach out. I, there'll be heartbreak. But, you know, loving sincerity, sincerely is worth it. And so, you know, there's more than just money we can give. Like I said, you can give 
encouragement, clothes, just other things in your life. But we don't want to be stifled by unbelief that God won't provide. That's not faith. Um, Hebrews 6.10 says this, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. The Lord strengthens our faith. There was a lady named Sadie Syker who served for many years as a house parent for missionaries, uh, missionaries' children in the Philippines. She loved books. She gladly loaned her books, but there were some that she would not loan out, and she stored them in her footlocker under the bed. Well, one night, she heard a faint gnawing sound. After searching everywhere in her room, she discovered that the, news, that the noise was coming from her footlocker. When she opened it, she found nothing but an enormous pile of dust where her favorite books were. All the books she had kept to herself had been lost to termites. What we give away, we keep. What we hoard, we lose. Isn't, don't you find that to be true? When you do not give to the Lord and you hoard, you just keep collecting money, collecting money, collecting money, God's going to take it from you one way or the other. The truck break down ten times in one month. I've seen that happen. Or those who were neglecting the tithe, they're, they're just not giving money. They're not in faith giving to the Lord. Uh, the heater goes out. The, le- the, the air conditioner. One way or the other, the Lord's going to get that money. But as the Lord shovels in, I shovel out. And God's got a bigger shovel. You know, the, I was thinking about that on the way here. I was thinking about, I don't know how many of y'all have had a cashier job or position, a clerical job. But I, I, I remember in the cashier, I would take the money, give the change. Take the money, give the change. Take, I'd be like, man, I'm, I wish I was making this much money. I'm the, this guy's, I mean, all this money. And then we, but then we would send the money off at night, and there'd be like a $10,000 deposit. But I'm just a money changer. It, the source of the money wasn't mine. And the recipient of the money wasn't mine. I'm just changing the money. And that's what we are to be. The Lord gives so we can give. The Lord wants me to be that blessing to somebody who needs it, who's hurting. I don't know if that's always money, like I said. It could just be a kind word or a kind deed to somebody who just needs it. They need to hear it. Or they need that food. Um, But to our last points here, and this is what I really wanted to grip our hearts with. In verses 12 through 15, we see Paul say, "You, you know, not only do you strengthen your faith in giving, you actually strengthen your thanksgiving in giving. You promote God, but you also promote thankfulness in others to God. Not you, to God. When you give to somebody, you've promoted thanksgiving to God. You have perpetuated it. (laughs) I know I'm thankful, but Lord, how can I make somebody else thankful? I know I've got all I need, but is there something I can do to where I can give or do something to where they give praise to God themselves. And you look for those opportunities. How can I be a blessing where they praise God? That's what he says here. Look at verse 12. For the, well, I'm sorry, verse 11. Well, know what? I, I think we stopped at verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. Now he that ministers seed to the sower... Now, he's directly quoting Isaiah 55 here. Now, he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now, that's that's a big verse here, and I would love to stop and and stop there about the 
the, the servants the Lord had given the talents to, the ones who had multiplied their talents by going to the exchange, the, and then the one who had only had the one talent, who buried it in the sand, uh, that is, the Lord has given us all a gift, a, a gift of ministry, somehow the minister to others. And what are we doing with the talents he's given us? Are, are we multiplying that joy? Are we multiplying? Uh, and so um, that's what it's talking about in verse 10, that the Lord's going to supply you as long as you are being a blessing to others. He's going to keep supplying you. Uh, but if you want, once you stop, he's going to make you sorry you stop. Uh, there's one quote that I didn't get to, but it, give according, if, uh, I'm sorry, giving according to your income lest God make change to your income according to your giving. Give according to your abundance. Give according to your income. But if you don't give anything, God may change your income to match your giving. Um, what the Lord gives, he can take away. Uh, I've said this many times, to whom much is given, much is required. So if, if you have gifts, if you have talents, let's use them for the Lord. Um, anyway, okay, verse 12, I'm sorry. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. There it is. Whiles by the experiment, Paul calls it an experiment, of this ministration... They glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. We give to bring glory to God. We give because we are not to neglect the abundance of that gift. We give to be obedient because we're told to give. But do this experiment. Paul calls it an experiment. When you give, Give in an unmarked envelope. Don't even let them know it's you. And you will find out later on, somehow, some way, that that was right on time for them. That was right on time. You may not think they need it. Again, no one ever has it as bad as you think. No one ever has it as good as you think. They may need that right there, and that's the way God's going to supply it. And if they don't know who gave it to them, They've got no one else to thank but the Lord. That's it. And you can watch them. Praise God. Whoa, you're talking about joy. Paul called an experiment. Do that. Not just be thankful tomorrow and Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've given me. How can I be a blessing to promote Thanksgiving? How can I be a blessing to where somebody is praising you as much as I'm praising you? It's a beautiful thought, isn't it? And I love it. It's a nugget in there. Well, let's just finish. But in verse 14, And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And when you start looking at 8 and 9, it's a beautiful study. Start looking at the way that they're bouncing off each other. How the churches of Macedonia are bouncing off Achaia. And Achaia off Macedonia. And then... Uh, because he says in this experiment, we, if you look at the forest, not only by giving are you promoting thanksgiving, but you're building a testimony that others see uh, brother so-and-so or somebody or the Lord just gave my brother $100 in an unmarked envelope and he needed $100. I think I'm going to give. So you, you're... You're springing. You're, you're sowing the seeds. And that's what God is doing. He's, he is encouraging others who may see the need that was met. And you didn't even know this person. It just trickles. It just trickles. Oh, you've got joy in your life. It's a gift we can all give. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, I don't know what your gift is. Maybe you don't have an abundance of money. Maybe you don't have money. I mean, that's not what it, it is. But God's given you something you can be a blessing to somebody else with. And let's be the tool God uses to bring thanksgiving to others 
and therefore it brings glory to God. Let's be the tool that God uses to bring thanksgiving to others and because it brings glory to God. Um, I'm thankful for all that he's given me. At the same time, I'm not to sit on my thanksgiving. I want to see how I can bring glory to God in my life. And one of the ways that we know that we cannot outgive God, and I know that uh, the Lord, to that servant, he called him slothful, the one who hid his talent in the ground and did not work to bring an increase at all. He didn't share what God had given him at all to bring increase. The Lord took it from him. Give it to another. Get, give it to the brother that has ten of them. Even though this one only has one, if he's not doing anything with what I gave him, then I'm going to take it all. And we shouldn't give out of fear. We, we shouldn't give because we're afraid of that. But we give as a testimony. We give for the proof of the sincerity of our love from a willing and ready heart, not grudgingly, but ready. Be cheerful to give. Amen. Well, I hope the Lord has blessed you with the study tonight. And I pray the Lord blesses you tomorrow in your all's Thanksgiving meals. And if, if any of you uh, do not have uh, plans or don't know if you're going to eat tomorrow, you can certainly let me know. And uh, we know the church will love the... I, I think everybody here is, is set for the morrow, but we don't want anybody to, to not have food tomorrow who's here. So... Um, we just pray that the Lord just bless us. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this, this lesson which you give us in your word. Father, it's for our growth. It's for, Father, the faith which we have in you, Lord, that uh, we know that you bless. We know that you're involved. Father, we pray, Lord, that you involve us, involve your people in your plans, and in, in the way that you bless others. Father, may we look for those opportunities. May we seek them. May we get our minds right, Father, that you are the one who supplies all our needs. You're all sufficient. Father, what we have is because you've given it to us. Everything we have, you've given to us. Father, may we take what you have given us, and may we turn around and be a blessing uh, and, be a, and bring glory to you. And bring glory in your kingdom. And Father, may we just look for those opportunities in life. Father, bless each one here tonight. And that you'll be with each one tomorrow as we're all with our families. And Father, that we're eating, that we give thanks. And Father, may we, may we seek out an opportunity where we may be a blessing to someone else, even if it's unanimous. Father, where they may glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand.